Hello. Praise the Lord, everybody. Oh, you can do better than that. Praise the Lord, everybody. If you can just stand to your feet this morning. Isn't it a great, great thing to be in the house of the Lord this morning? So many people didn't make it. Let's not be ungrateful this morning. Let's just give him the praise that he's worthy of. Oh, we bless your name, Jesus. We know that it's only by your grace and your mercy that we stand here this morning. And so we lift you up. We magnify your name. We give you all the glory. We honor you, oh God. You are king over our lives. You are Lord in our hearts. You are God in this house. We proclaim it. We declare it. There is no God like you. And we bless you. We love you. We bless you. We love you. We bless you. We love you. We honor you. We adore you. We magnify you. We lift you. We exalt you. We praise you. We worship you. We're excited to be in the house of the Lord this morning to give you praise, to give you glory, for you're deserving. You alone are worthy. is all around all around all around everywhere I look your love is all around to amor y bondad donde quiera que yo voy allí tú estás to amor y bondad donde quiera que yo voy allí tú estás all around all around hey Everywhere I look, all around, say all around, all around, all around yeah. All around. Everywhere, everywhere oh, let's sing it with feeling. All around, sing all around, all around, all around, all around. everywhere. Everywhere I look, your love is all around, all around, all around, yeah. All around. Everywhere, everywhere I look, your love is all around. All right. It seems a few of us are so excited about the garb. It is International Sunday, right? So we're all excited, but let's not forget why we're here. So let's take a minute. Let's greet the people all around us. Let's say how great we all look. Come on, find two, three, four, five, six people. Hug them and tell them that the love of the Lord is in the room. It's all around. It's everywhere. We can feel it. Sing all around. All around. All around. All around. All around. Everywhere. Everywhere. I look your love is all around. All around. All around. All around. All around. All around. Sing all around. All around. All around. Everywhere. Everywhere. I look your oh, just love is all around. All around. All around. All around. All around, all around, everywhere. I love. All love is all around. Sing all around, all around, all around, all around. All around. All around. everywhere. Everywhere, I look. Your love is all Let around. Let the nation sing. Let the nation sing. Let the people shout. Oh, let your kingdom come. Let your kingdom come. Pour it out. Oh God. And most of all, we want you to manifest, manifest your love. That's our heart's desire, Lord. Manifest, manifest, oh, manifest your love. Oh, 
all around. All I see is all around. All around. Everywhere. Everywhere I look, your love is all around. The love of the Lord is everywhere. It's palpable. If we want to feel it, it's there. Oh, everywhere I look, your love is all around. Everywhere I look, your love is all around. Oh, say! Everywhere I look, your love is all around. Everybody say! Everywhere I look, your love is all around. All around. Say! Everywhere I look, your love is all around. Everywhere I look, everywhere I look, everywhere I look, everywhere I look your love is all around. Everywhere I look, your love is all around. Everywhere I look, your love is all around. Look your love is all around. Everywhere. Everywhere I look your love is all around. Everywhere. Everywhere I look your love is all around. If I look to the north and the south, it's there. The east and the west. Look your love is all around. Everywhere I look your love is all around. Everywhere I look your love is all around. Everywhere I look your love is all around. Don't they care that care your boy? I get to a stars. Don't they care that care your boy? I get to a stars. Don't they care that care your boy? I get to a stars. Don't they care that care your boy? I get to a stars. You try it. Don't they care that care your boy? I get to a stars. Don't they care that care your boy? I get to a stars. Hey. Don't they care that care your boy? I get to a stars. Don't they get up? Hey, your boy, I need to answer. Sing all around. All around. All around. All around. Everywhere. Everywhere. I think your love is all around. Sing all around. All around. All around. Everywhere. Everywhere. I think your love is all around. Let the nation sing. Let the nation sing. Let the people sing. Let the people sing. Let your kingdom come. Let your kingdom come. Pour your spirit out. Pour your spirit out. And most of all, we want you to manifest your love. Manifest. Yeah. Manifest your love. Manifest. Manifest. Manifest your love. Sing all around, all around, all around, yeah. around. Everywhere. 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 All around, can we all say? Everywhere I look, your love is all around. Say, everywhere I look, your love is all around. Thank you, Lord, for your love. Look, your love is all around. Everywhere I look, your love is all around. All around, everywhere I look, your love is all around. Everywhere I look, your love is all around. Don't they care that K O boy, I get to a stars? Don't they care that K your boy I get to Estas? You say, don't they care that K your boy I get to Estas? Don't they care that K your boy I get to Estas? Don't they care that K your boy I get to Estas? Don't they care that K your boy I get to Estas? Sing all around, all around, all around, all around, everywhere, everywhere. I look, your love is all around. Sing all around, all around, all around. We thank you for your love that's all around mighty savior you are love and so we know that you are here because you are love thank you for your love oh god oh we need it we need it we need it we need it 
every day, all day. Love changes, love covers, love saves, love heals, love redeems, love restores, love protects, love. We need it, 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 we need, it. We need your love, Lord. Thank you. Thank you. Yahweh, Yahweh. We call you, we call you, we call you Yahweh. We lift our voices and we cry, Abba Father, Holy One, Holy One, you are our God. And we bless you this morning. We're here for no other reason than to entertain the King, the only wise God, the only wise God. Oh, we love you tonight, today, Jesus. We're here, Yahweh, to lift you high, to exalt you, to give you glory, oh God. Here we are, arms outstretched, our hearts inclined to worship. Here we are, oh God, a living sacrifice. Here we are, oh God, a breathing declaration. We're here this morning. We're here this morning. Have your way in us. Have your way. We don't need to sing another tune. Lord, we just desire you. Oh, it's all about you it's all about you Yahweh say as we raise our voices up God we lift you high we lift you high we lift you high Yahweh Yahweh and we are gathered we are gathered in this place in one accord in one accord in one accord Yahweh one more time as we raise, as we raise our voices up, God, we, we lift you high, hey. we lift you high, Yahweh. Yahweh, and we're here today, we are gathered in this place, in one accord, in one accord, hey.
You're the author of our life. The finisher. The finisher. The finisher. The finisher. The finisher. Yahweh. The first and last. You're the first and last. The first and last. Yahweh. Yahweh. Hey, Yahweh. Yahweh. We love you. We love you, Yahweh. We adore you. We adore you, Yahweh. Oh, 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 oh Yahweh. 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 Say, Yahweh. We love you. We love oh. you, Yahweh. We adore you. We adore you, Yahweh. Oh, Hallelujah, Jesus. 
Hallelujah, Jesus. Lord, we love you. Lord, we love you. Lord, we praise you. Lord, we magnify you. Oh, yes, Lord, Jesus. You're worthy, oh God. Oh, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Even as we just move in the, in the prayer, let's not forget those who are sick and infirm in the body. Let's not forget Sister, House, um, Sister Cynthia Housen. Let's not forget that Brother Duperval is coming out. Thank God. Can we praise God for that? But that God would keep his hand upon him. Let's not forget Bishop. Bishop is currently in Jamaica attending a funeral. We want him to have traveling mercies that God will keep his hand upon him as he comes back home safely. Amen. And all those others who are sick in the body. But you know the wonderful thing about this song? It reminds you of who's in charge. It reminds you of who Amen. is the one who Hallelujah. has everything in his hand. Amen? Yes, Amen? Yes, yes, and we're going to just, we're going to end off with a prayer, but uh, with a scripture, but I just want to go in that we, we can go before God about these things right now because he's the deliverer. He's the healer. He's the changer. Let's go before God right now. Lord, Jesus, oh God, we come before you about all these who are sick in the body, about Sister, sister Housen, Lord. We ask you, Lord Jesus, your healing, that you continue to heal her up and bring up to full recovery, bring up to full, Lord Jesus, that she could come back in your house and give you the glory and the honor. Lord Jesus, oh God, keep your hand upon her. Keep your hand upon, Lord Jesus, oh God, Brother Duperval, Lord, Lord, you've released him but from the hospital, but Lord, just continue to help him to heal. Touch every single person, oh God. Lord Jesus, oh God, Lord, your hand upon the bishop, the founder of this church, the father of this church, Lord, we ask you, Lord, oh God, comfort his heart, and Lord Jesus, take care of him even as he comes back from Jamaica, Lord Jesus, and may you bring him safely and without an incident. And Lord, touch every single family, touch every single need in this place here this morning. Lord, we know that you are the King of kings, the Lord of lords, the one who has all the answers, and we ask you, oh God, Jesus, 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 Lord, oh God, move in a mighty way. And we thank you, O oh God, for this right now in your precious name. And Lord Jesus, thank you for all that you're doing and continuing to do in your precious name, in your precious name, in your precious name. And Lord Jesus, O oh God, thank you in Jesus' name. I worship you. You are here. Worship. I worship you. Yes, God, we worship you. I worship you. And you are here. You are here. Healing broken hearts. Healing broken hearts. And Lord, we worship you. I worship you. Yes, Jesus, we worship you. I worship you. And can we make a few declarations and call him first a way maker? Way miracle way worker, miracle promise word. keeper, promise light, in the darkness. light in the darkness. My God, that's who you are. That is who you are. Can we say that again? Call him a way maker. Way maker. Miracle, miracle worker. Word. He's a promise, promise keeper. keeper. Light in the light darkness. In the darkness. Yes. My God, that is who you are. Say you are. Moving, moving in the midst. We worship you. I worship you. Come on, declare it. I worship you. I worship you. And God, you're here. You are here. Mending broken lives. Yes, God, we worship you, Jesus. Yes, Lord, we worship you, Lord. Let's cry and call him away. Miracle, miracle worker, worker promise, promise keeper, light in the darkness. Yes, my God, that is who you 
morning that he is here performing miracles yes God we worship you hey God we worship you you gotta see that lump falling off body you gotta see that cancer cell decreasing until it is invisible you gotta see that mental disorder going you gotta see your mama coming out of that bed you gotta see brother coming out of that bed you are here, Jesus, performing miracles, performing miracles, whatever miracle you need today, God is here, God is here, let's declare one more time, Waymaker, Waymaker. miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, that is who you are. Can we shout it one more time? Waymaker! Waymaker. Miracle worker! Promise yes, Lord! Light in the darkness That is who you are Waymaker! Miracle worker! Promise keeper Light in the darkness That is who you given to God. Welcome. On the behalf of the uh, ministry of Oneness Pentecostal Tabernacle, God bless you. I know we're all standing in the house, but I believe there may be a few visitors in the house. If you're a visitor, wave your hand. 
If it's your first time here, wave your hand. We welcome you to Oneness Pentecostal Tabernacle, where we serve and keep and love everybody. Have your liberty in Jesus. This next song that we're singing is especially for you. So if there's a visitor next to you, give them a hug. If there's a visitor next to you, tell them how happy that you are that they came. Visitors, you make it special. We thank you that you've come this morning. Welcome to One is Pentecostal Tabernacle, the ministry that serves and keeps. Welcome first-time visitors. You're invited to fellowship with our pastors and ministers in the guest lounge after 1130 service. Sundays, we begin with prayer at 8 a.m. Our refresh service begins at 830 a.m. Our Sunday school begins at 1030 a.m. And our renew service begins at 1130 a.m. The OPT Sanctuary is open for prayer on Saturdays from 5 a.m. to 7 a.m. All are welcome to stop in and pray for that time or part of that time. Adult Bible study continues this Wednesday at 7.45 p.m. with the lesson on the Emotionally Healthy Church Part 2. God wants His church to be whole. A church can only achieve spiritual health when its members relate in emotionally healthy ways. Plan to be a part of this discourse. This Saturday, New York Metro District will convene a Bible quiz seminar here at OPT at 9.30 a.m. to 12.30 p.m. If you are interested to involve yourself or your kids in OPT Bible Quiz Ministry 2018-2019, please plan to attend the seminar. All leaders are invited to OPT's annual leadership planning retreat with guest facilitator Reverend and Lady Gitros. The focus of the retreat in our initiative for 2019 is the common good, inviting all leaders and members of oneness to unite and labor together for the greater good of each other, the church, and our community, based on the model of Acts chapter 2, verses 42 to 47. OPT's 44th church anniversary services convenes November 30th and December 2nd, 2018, under the theme Becoming. Guest speaker will be Reverend Stephen Jury.
Welcome to Oneness Pentecostal Tabernacle to the 1130 service, where we have come in our traditional attire, and uh, some of it is some of our wishful thinking. I don't see anybody here in a babushka. You know, that's the old Russian headscarf and the big old red dress, like a Russian granny. But you all look lovely. Look at somebody right beside you. Say, you look nice. You, you can tell all the people who either forgot, who have no imagination, and they just came as Americans. So, please pardon me for looking like an American. As the ushers are coming, we want to give recognition to the wonderful job that the music department has done in its entirety yesterday. And they've come back around and uh, added to the worship today. That is a nice song. I like it. I did? Wow. I didn't even know that. They said I wrote it. I don't know how. Especially since I can't hold a tune, note, key. Happy birthday, Elder E. It's good to know that you're still in the saddle right beside me. If you're a parent, go hoop hoop. This year we are having Bible quizzing and we would like to participate. The Bible quizzing subject matter for this year is the doctrine. And that goes from Genesis through Revelations. I will say this for those who have participated in Bible quizzing. Most often than not, they have achieved high standards academically. They have gone on to do great things in college and have gone on to great careers and professions. And I believe that the Bible quizzing is foundational to that. And so your children not only learn the Word of God, but the Word of God also keeps them in the house of God. And it also sets the standard for their trajectory in life. So if you want your children to be a success, talk to them. Encourage them to start up with Bible quizzing. I believe Sister Lydia is involved with the Sunday school with Bible quizzing. And since it's doctrine, it would be nice if all of us old heads who can barely remember one from two to see if we can get into the act of it. So what we're going to do this week, Minister Omar, if you can remind me, let us send an email blast to everyone that we have record of email address, the whole entire scripture, uh, all the scriptures that are in the Bible quizzing lesson plan for competition and who knows maybe we might be able to try our hands at hitting the buzzer and you know two part question three part question look like we are quiz masters extraordinaires amen oh you look nice what did you come as today what country is that from that's a continent. Which one? <laughs> it just looks good, right? Oh, and your sister has one on too as well. You have wonderful smiles. To Saints of Oneness, I thank you 
for your giving throughout the week. Uh, we're not through it yet. Please continue to be faithful in your giving. Also, we were supposed to have had an All Saints meeting during Sunday school. We didn't get quorum. So, unfortunately, right after service, before we go downstairs and have fun and eat and laugh, we're going to have to take out 30 minutes hard time, maximum. 30 minutes, we will call the vote, and then we'll go have fun. With that, please be guided by the ushers in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord. Before the ushers uh, do come, we've been circulating on attendance for an update contact sheet for your name, address, sorry, email address and telephone numbers. Please do not leave without filling in this information so we may contact you in the cases when we have changes in our services. You still ready to praise? You still got to praise? Anybody got a hallelujah? A thank you, Jesus? Yeah. You are good and your mercy endureth forever. Lord, you are good and your mercy endureth forever. Can we all sing that? Lord, you are good and your mercy endureth
worship him for who he is. Let's worship him for who he is. Let's worship him for who he is. Let's worship him for who he is. Praises for everything that he's done. We praise him for the food and we praise him for the money and we praise him for all those things. But worship is God, whether you give me anything else or not, for who you are, I give you glory for who you are. I bless your name for who you are. I give you everything that I am. Yes, Lord, we worship you. We worship you, we worship you, we worship you, we worship you for who you are. We're going to make some declarations this morning about how excellent God is. We serve an excellent God. A God that is great and greatly to be praised. And on this International Sunday, we give him praise in every language, as many languages as we can think of. We give him praise. But I don't know about you, but there's just something special about calling his name. Just calling his name. Calling his name. Yes. Jesus! We bless you this morning. We praise you this morning. For you are an excellent God. You are a great God. You are a holy God. And we give you all the praise. We give you all the glory. And we give you all the honor.
Just praise the Lord. Everybody, everywhere, come on. Just lift up your voices. Clap your hands. Stand 
and give the Lord a great praise that he is more than worthy of. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Such a great and wonderful God that we all serve and we all can give our testimonies different languages, but it's the same redemption story. Let's pray. Father, thank you, God, for this opportunity that you have extended to us that another time we might be in your house, giving you praise, giving you glory for all of the things that you have done. And as it has been said, it is your favorite song of all, the song of the redeemed. When all the people from every nation and every tongue come together to give you glory and honor for your redemptive acts in our lives. It is a song that makes you sit up and take notice and be enthroned upon our worship. Hallelujah. So we thank you that you are in this place right now. Now we ask you to speak to us one more time and show us what your will is for all of us in this place. Let souls be saved by this word. Let the conviction of the Holy Spirit come by this word. Let conversion and faith and transformation come by this word of the Lord. In Jesus' name, and let all of God's people say amen. Turn with me in your Bibles to the book of Revelation chapter 7, and we will read verses 9 through to 17. Revelation chapter 7, and we will read verses 9 through to 17. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Revelation 9, Revelation 7 rather, verses 9 through 17. And if you can stand in honor of God's word. <clears throat> amen. If you found it, say Amen. Let's read on the count of two, one, two. After this, I beheld, and lo, a great multitude, which no man could number, of all nations, and kindreds, and people, and tongues, stood before the throne, and before the Lamb, clothed with white robes and palms in their hands. And cried with a loud voice, saying, Salvation to our God, which sitteth upon the throne and unto the Lamb. And all the angels stood round about the throne and about the elders and the four beasts and fell before the throne on their faces and worshipped God, saying, Amen, blessing and glory and wisdom and thanksgiving and honor and power and might be unto our God forever and ever. Amen. And one of the elders answered, saying unto me, What are these which are arrayed in white robes, and whence came they? And I said unto him, Sir, thou knowest. And he said unto me, These are they which came out of great tribulation, and have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. Therefore are they before the throne of God, and serve him day and night in, the, in his temple. And he that sitteth upon the throne shall dwell among them. They shall hunger no more, neither thirst any more, neither shall the sun light on them, nor any heat. For the Lamb which is in the midst of the throne shall feed them, and shall lead them unto living fountains of waters. And God shall wipe away all tears." From their eyes. The Lord bless you. You may be seated. Today on this All Nations Sunday, I want to speak to us on the subject, many nations, one destination. Many nations, one destination. Why don't you tell somebody, we may have come from different places, but we have one destination in Christ. Tell somebody else, on the other hand, just in case they, didn't, they weren't convinced the first time, tell them we may have come from different places, but we have one destination in Christ. For full disclosure, let me uh, first of all just uh, extend greetings to, uh, to Pastor, to Bishop in his absence. I th think he's uh, away this weekend, so we continue praying for him, for God to give him uh, journey mercies to come back safely. And greetings to Pastor and to Sister Marie Graham, to Pastor Mitchell and to Sister Mitchell, 
to all of the ministers in the house, John, Maximin, Paris, and to their wives, to all of the saints and all of our guests, I greet you in the name of Jesus Christ. How many are glad that God has spared your life another week? Amen. For full disclosure, let me point out to us, uh, and I think it's always very critical when we deal with scriptures, and especially those that when you study and read, you find that there are various viewpoints to make certain disclosure so that when people hear things said another way, that it's not all that confusing. That the book of Revelation is one of those books that is uh, highly debated in many ways. There are many aspects of Revelation that people are still grappling with, the theologians, the writers, to try to make sense of much of what is said in the book of Revelation. And so this particular text that I'm dealing with today, Revelation chapter 7, verses 9 to 17, may be viewed in different ways, and you may hear it preached a different way from how I will preach it today, because there are still that wrangling with Scripture to decide whether or not the church is going to have a pre-tribulation rapture or a mid-tribulation rapture. And so there are some who see this as not necessarily the saints that are coming from the church age, but for those who were saved out of, in the middle of the tribulation, the church already having been raptured in chapter 4 of the book of Revelation. However, as I begin to look at this particular chapter, I notice that in this, the 24 elders who represent the church is also mentioned within this particular text. So I see this as being representative of God's intention for the place that he'll bring all humanity whether those who will be saved during the church age or those who will be saved during the tribulation. So with that said, let's get into it. The book of Genesis is the book of beginnings. And actually, the word Genesis really means beginnings, Bereshith, which means the beginnings, the start of all things. And in the book of Genesis, we see the beginnings of many things, the beginnings of creation, the beginnings of relationship between God and humanity. We see his plan. He intends for men to live within a certain utopian environment where he is the center, where God is the center of our existence, as we see in the book of uh, Genesis in the Garden of Eden. Unfortunately, we see also in Genesis the beginnings of sin. We see in Genesis the beginnings of nations and races and ethnicities and disparity between human beings instead of the unity that God would intend in the human race. But what I'm so glad about is that whereas Genesis is the book of the beginnings, there is also a revelation. Book of the revelation, which is the book of the consummation. It is where God will bring all things into one in Christ. And here's an error that we often make. We call it the book of the revelations, plural. But really, it is the book of the revelation, singular. It is the revelation of Jesus Christ, the fullness of God into whom God will bring the consummation of the world. All things will find its place and its center in Christ. So I'm sorry for those who do not ascribe at this point to the name of Christ. Because the whole world will be consumed into Christ. And whether or not we praise him in this life, we'll find ourselves on one end of the continuum or the other but everything will be in Christ. And all the kingdoms of the world will belong to Christ. And the judgments of the nations that disobeyed him will be in Christ. Somebody say in Christ. And so from the creation in Genesis, it was clear that God's intent was for humanity to represent him, to execute his purposes within the earth. Something's going on with this microphone here. 
And hence, he created them as his co-regents in his image to attain to his likeness. And he delegated to them authority over all creation, as is evident in Genesis chapter 1, verses 26 to 28. But fulfilling this role would require a constant relationship with God, between God and humanity, the coordination with God and the coordination with fellow human beings. There needed to be a certain sense of oneness. Everybody say oneness. If we were going to be able to fulfill God's mandate for humanity in the earth. But of course, there was the introduction of rebellion and sin, and it seemed that sin would forever tarnish that primary relationship with God, as we see in Genesis chapter 3, and the lateral relationships that human beings were to share with each other, as we see in Genesis chapter 4, verses 2 to 8, where we are introduced to the first murder in the human family. The judgment of God was swift and decisive. Hum, hum, human beings were expelled from the Garden of Eden. They were expelled from the tree of life. But what I'm so glad about in Genesis chapter 3 verses 16 to 24, that even in the middle of the judgment of God, even in the middle of uh, expelling humanity from the utopia for which he had created them, there was a faint glimmer of hope. Because to the serpent it was prophesied that the woman would produce a male child that would destroy the diabolical uh, agenda of the serpent. And to Adam and Eve were given atonement, the covering in the skins of a slain animal whose blood was spilled because of their sin. And even though God drove them out of the garden... But he never drove them away from his providence. And even though they lost the glory, they never lost the grace of God. Somebody ought to lift your hand and give the Lord thanks for that right now. There was yet a plan for humanity. Now, after Adam, we see the physical swell of generations coupled with the moral degeneration. And this seemed to have swung the pendulum towards utter rebellion and anarchy against God. To the point where Nimrod, after the flood, gathered the people together at the Tower of Babel. Rather, before that, to the point where God had to judge the world with a flood. But even in the judging of the world with a flood, in Genesis chapter 6 and verse 9, God still saved one human family through whom he would repopulate the entire earth. And to them were extended the same mandate that was given to Adam and to Eve to be the co-regents over the earth. How many are glad in this house that God never ever changes his mind about human destination? How many are glad about that today? So glad that God never changes his mind. God is determined that there will be one humanity through whom he will rule over the earth. And if you'll notice here that in the, in, in the book of Genesis chapter 9 and 10, that the sons of Noah, the sons of Noah began what we consider today to be the various races, and the various ethnic groups that are upon the earth that are described in Revelation as the kindreds and peoples, races and ethnic groups began with the sons of Noah but it was the intention of God that even though there were variety in the color of their skin, and even though they may live in different places, because you notice that it talks about some who lived in the Middle East and Africa and in the European continent, you will notice that it was still the plan of God that all of these would unite into one body to give him glory. Let's keep this for a second here. Whereas diversity serves as the basis on which we discriminate and, div and become divisive. It is the plan of God, and this may be a paradox, but it is the plan of God to attain unity through diversity. How many know that? God attains unity through diversity. 
He brings things together because if you don't have diversity, you can't have unity. All you have is monotony. But God brings different pieces together and he brings about unity. So when the sons of Noah began races and ethnicities, but some generations later, beginning with Nimrod, led by Nimrod, the people decided to build a tower which has come to be known as the Tower of Babel. And God's disappointment with this tower was not the fact that the people came together in unity because it was God's will for them to unify. But it was the fact that they were unifying around the motif of rebellion and unbelief in the promise of God. Because you see, God had promised to Noah that he would never send another flood upon the earth. But historical sources say that Nimrod led the people to believe that they could not trust the promise of God, that God would once again wipe out the entire world with a flood. So their solution was, let's build a tower that reaches up to heaven. So that means that we can live however we want to. And this God being, even if he decides to judge with the flood, the flood waters can't reach us because the tower will be so high. So in opposition to God, they began to build the tower to mark their rebellion of human achievement without God. Again, the judgment of God was swift. Now notice that before this, we already had races and ethnicities, but apparently they still spoke the same language. Now God divided them and dispersed them in Genesis chapter 11. God judged them, divided them, dispersed them. And here we had at the Tower of Babel, we had the formation of what we call tongues and nations. Anybody following me in the house? So at the flood, we had races and ethnicities. Now at the Tower of Babel, at the third judgment of God, we now have races, ethnicities, but now we have tongues and nations. And it seemed as though the enemy of hum human unity was having a field day because he had already gotten them driven out of the utopia that God had created for them in the Garden of Eden. But now he saw that there was now a division among them because now they had races and ethnic groups. But now they seem to be further divided because now they've got different tongues and they are now moving off in pockets to form different nations. Follow me here. It seemed like the cancer of sin had saturated the hearts of humanity. And this great plan of God to have one united force of human beings dwelling on the earth in the presence of God and having dominion over the earth seems like this was thwarted, forfeited, would never ever come to pass. Oh, but I'm so glad that even in the judgment of God, God always has a plan. And we see in Revelation in Genesis 11, it ends with division. Of the nations. Nations scattered, humanity scattered all over the earth, rebellion and sin judged by God. But here it is in Genesis chapter 12, it opens with God calling one man. Everybody say one man. God called one man named Abraham, whom he renamed Abraham and determined that through Abraham he would begin a special nation. And here is the deal, through whom he would redeem all humanity from sin. So in other words, God is saying that even though everybody has sinned, and my solution uh, in the long term is for everybody to come back together, but I'm going to begin this plan to bring all men back together through one man, through one man, and through him, through his generations, and through a particular seed of Abraham, through one man that will come through him, I will bring all of the nations of the world back together. I will redeem them from the sin of rebellion. I will bring them back, even though there are many ethnicities, even though there are many races, even though now they have many languages and they've been divided into many nations, but I've got one plan to bring them all back together in one place. 
one destination. Lord, I feel the Holy Ghost in this place. And all throughout the Old Testament, we see the development of the plot of God anticipating the seed of the woman that would offer the atonement, that would destroy sin, that would reopen the way to paradise, that would bring back the utopian era, that will herald for all humanity to come back together in one, even though because of sin and the judgment of God, they had been dispersed to various winds of the earth. There were promises to Abraham, to Isaac, to Jacob, to David within the framework of God trying to uh, progressively, God working out his will, not trying, God actively working out his will to bring all the nations of the earth together through one seed, through the seed of Abraham. To Isaiah, Isaiah prophesied concerning the ultimate king that would occupy the throne of David. In Isaiah chapter 9, verses 6 and 7, he says, For unto us a child is born, and unto us a son is given. And he says, And his name shall be called Emmanuel, and the government shall be upon his shoulder. In other words, the international government shall be upon his shoulder. So whether you come from a nation that has a king, or a premier, or a prime minister, or a president, what he was saying here is God would still have a certain care and a certain sovereign rule over all the nations because God would be looking to preserve a remnant out of every nation, out of every kindred, out of every tongue to, uh, to, 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 to take this place that Adam and Eve had seemingly forfeited. Jeremiah predicted that there would be a branch of David, a descendant of David, a righteous king in Jeremiah chapter 23 verses 5 and 33 verses 15, verse 15, a righteous king that would influence the whole of the earth. Isaiah once again revisited, revisited the seed of the woman in Isaiah 7 and 14. And Micah made it clear that he was coming to make atonement for the sins of the entire world. The Messiah would be a glorious king, a glorious tabernacle, according to Haggai. I mean, he said that, uh, he says that the glory of the latter house shall be greater than the glory of the former house. Because whereas in the tabernacle of Moses, there was only one people. But in the tabernacle of Jesus Christ, all people would be gathered back together. I feel the Holy Ghost in this place. Hallelujah. But that which was prophesied in the Old Testament soon became the reality of the New Testament. That which was promised in the Old Testament soon became what was occurring in the New Testament. Because at the birth of Jesus in St. Luke chapter 2 verses 10 to 11, and I'm trying to be quick about this today. The angel uh, announced to the shepherds who were in the field, he said unto them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. Somebody shout all people. Not just to the Jews, just in case when it was said in Matthew 1, 21, that he shall save his people from their sin. Just in case people would limit the, his people to the Jews, Luke made it clear that this people was referring to all people. Somebody holler all people. Somebody say all people. Good tidings of great joy which shall be to all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David. The Savior, which is Christ the Lord. He was born to bring all humanity back together. He was the promised seed of Abraham that would reconcile all nations, all men, back to himself. I feel the Holy Ghost in this place. Brothers and sisters, so he would bring back all human beings back to himself. But not only that, he would do so by unifying, by giving back to all of us that which he gave to Adam in the beginning. Because in Genesis chapter 2, he stooped down and he breathed into Adam the breath of life, the spirit of life, and he became a living soul. And Adam was supposed to pass it on to all humanity. Hallelujah. Lord, I feel the Holy Ghost in here. 
that glory of the Spirit of God was supposed to be passed on to all humanity because that is the unifying force. That is what would bring all of us together, even though our bodies may be shaped differently, though they may have different complexion, different colors, though there may be different races and nationalities. If Adam had passed to all of us the one Spirit of God, that all men would be united in one. But here is the deal. In Acts chapter 2, verses 5 through to 11, we see the plan of God. In Acts chapter 2, rather, we see the plan of God. It says, and when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. And there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing, a mighty rushing wind, and it filled all the house where they were. And what happened? And they were all filled with the Spirit of God. So in other words, the same Spirit of God that breathed upon Adam and made him a living soul was now available to breathe upon all humanity to make us all connected back to God, fulfilling the prophecy of Joel that says, In the last day, said God, I will pour out my Spirit upon all flesh. Somebody say all flesh. Whether you're white flesh or black flesh or Mongolite flesh or European flesh, it doesn't matter whether you're Trinidadian flesh or Jamaican flesh or Bayesian flesh or American flesh or Filipino flesh or May, it doesn't matter. Upon all flesh, the Spirit of God will be poured out in the hearts of everyone because God is getting ready to recreate one human force to take dominion over the earth. Somebody holler, take that devil. Come on. Say, in your face, devil, you thought you were going to destroy the plan of God. You thought you were going to thwart the plan of God. You thought that human beings would never rise again. But look at us. Come on.